Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back to another year full of tutorials. Before I start, I want to wish you a healthy and happy new year, full of love and lots of creativity. Today I'm featuring a brand new flower stamp set by Altenew. So this is a tulip set. This is a January build a flower stamp set. This is a subscription a monthly kit. You don't have to be a subscriber to get it if you like it, but keep in mind that you do get a discount if you are one of their monthly subscribers. Every month the flowers are just stunning. I absolutely love uh, all the flower sets that Altenew makes, and this is no exception. It is a layering stamp set and I decided to stamp three flowers, one in yellow, one in orange and another one with pink shade. At the back of the packaging there is also a guide that you can follow to layer one stamp on top of the other. And usually the first layer is completely solid like this one. I like to prepare it with the back of my palm until it gets kind of foggy. This way I know that uh, the ink is going to apply nicely without leaving any splotches. And this is something I always do when I'm using a solid stamp for the first time. For my pink tulip I'm using the Cherry Blossom dye ink set. I like that uh, you can get those in sets of four and you always know how to use them. They match perfectly together. However, you can get them separately if you like or in a form of a little ink cube which makes it really easy to store. Now, um, I'm going to flip the paper and I'm going to uh, stamp this one more time, this uh, time with my warm and cozy ink set. And the first one is sun kissed. Now, moving on to the second layer, and uh, this time I'm using orange cream. This tulip has five layers of stamps to stamp one on top of the other and I only have four inks on my ink set. But this is not a problem, you can always use uh, one of the inks that you have more than once, one on top of the other, to make it look slightly darker, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So here I flipped the paper and I'm going to stamp the second layer on the other tulip and this is Pink Alicious. And you can see here I did a great job uh, layering one stamp on top of the other. However, on this third layer, I'm not going to do a great job. Hopefully you can tell that this uh, darker shade is stamped way far up than it should have been. But I don't really care, I'm going to continue and stamp the orange. And you can also see here that they are not perfectly aligned. But trust me, you don't have to be super neat with layering stamps. These flowers are going to look beautiful no matter how you stamp them. They are really forgiving. So I'm going to place the fourth layer on top. The names of the inks that I'm using, the ink sets that I will be using throughout the video are linked down below. And also this is part of a blog, hope there are lots of giveaways to be won, so make sure to visit my uh, blog for a chance to win. And uh, when I'm working with those layering stamp sets, I absolutely love how that image comes to life once you add the darker shades. So now I'm going to move on to the fifth layer, and this time I don't have a fifth color of ink, because my sets of ink have only four. This time I'm going to use the darker shade, and I'm going to stamp one on top of the other again and again, three or four times, to make it look as if it is darker. And of course I will repeat the same process with a darker shade of my oranges one more time. Also notice that as I'm using different colors for the two tulips, I always make sure that I wipe clean my stamp before I move on to use another ink pad, just to make sure that I will not contaminate my ink pads. And for that I'm using my chamois. So these two tulips look absolutely gorgeous and I'm sure they will look beautiful in any color combo that you decide to use. In the stamp set there is another tulip design which I'm going to stamp and this time I'm going to use my yellow shades. The ink set, the yellow ink set that I'm using here is called Pocketful of Sunshine and this tulip has only four layers so I'm good to go with the four inks from the set. And I use the darker shade twice, one on top of the other just to make it look darker, because I absolutely love the shadows, I think they really bring those flowers to life. Now I know that I will create a flower bouquet on top of my card, so I need to have some leaves. The leaves have only two or maybe three layers. And I'm going to need some stems for the flowers, that's why I'm using this branch. 
three times. I'm not going to use it as a whole. Now, as you can see, I have layered on top all the matching dies. I'm going to run them through my die cutting machine. I like to have uh, elements popped on my cards with foam tape at the back. I love dimension and that's why I am a big fan of matching dies. You can always use your scissors, good old scissors, and do some fuzzy cutting, but I find that these dies make my life really easy. All the elements are cut out now and I'm going to work on my background. I'm using this cover-up die which is absolutely beautiful. This doesn't cut out anything, it just creates some embossing on top of my panel. It is an old product but I go back to it again and again. I am trying to show it to you on camera. But that's super difficult with all the lights that I have on my studio now. Anyway, you will see the close-up photos at the end of the video. Now I'm going to use a circle die and I'm going to place it on top of my panel to cut out a window. I'm not going for a shaker card, but I always like to have something where I can tuck in my flower bouquet. My background panel is 4 a quarter by 5 and a half, while the front one is 4 by 5 and a half, so I end up having two little borders on the left and on the right of my card. Now I'm going to play a little bit with the flowers and the leaves and try to decide where they're going to go and I do have foam tape at the back, however the foam tape that I'm using is quite forgiving and I'm not pressing it down too hard so that you can see I can move the pieces until I'm happy with the placement. And it's always nice to stamp more leaves than you actually need for your flower bouquet so that you have plenty and you can play around with. Now, in the beginning I didn't stamp enough, I think, but anyway, you can always cut the bigger one. You see, it's super huge here. So I'm going to stamp it and use it twice. This is upside down with a shadow at the top, but I really don't mind. I think that at the end, these are uh, details that only we card makers see, not the recipient. Anyway, I'm going to finish off with the last leaf and I have a banner with a sentiment here that I white embossed and this is the same cardstock as the one that I used for the background and since I'm obsessed with uh, gems lately, I'm going to add a few here and there on the flowers. They're going to look as droplets and they are going to turn those flowers looking really fresh. I absolutely love flower sunsets, I cannot have enough of them, I find they are perfect for any occasion and I always like to say that, so this can be a perfect card for pretty much anything, since the sentiment is quite generic and it says hello beautiful. Here are some close-up photos on the card that I made for today, I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.